Ah, the Free Mint meta. The trend that brought us such a legendary grade A blue chip such as Mecha Goblins, Doodle Poop, and who could forget Pepalodian. These are the kinds of DGEN mints that we've seen all summer. And at this point, most NFT collectors are completely over it. And if you're one of those people, I happen to have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that things are about to change dramatically and the current free mint model might finally be coming to an end. But the bad news is that it might be replaced by something that's even worse. And I hope enough collectors watch this video so that they don't fall for this high risk trend that we might be seeing pretty soon. Now, free mints didn't always have this negative connotation, okay? Some legendary projects like CryptoPunks were given out for free years ago. And in fact, I personally released a free NFT just a few months ago. There's just nothing inherently wrong with giving away things for free. But in recent months, it's taken a turn for the worse and it's devolved into this cringy casino style game. Truly one of the lowest forms of gambling there is and i'd rather lose my rent money just betting on you know the ear pulling world championship than sweep another goblin pits derivative and sure there are some quality projects out there but by and large you're dealing with nfts where the only value is in short-term speculation it's basically a game of hot potato where you're trying to flip it to the next person before the inevitable and permanent crash to zero in general the only winners are the people who are actually making these nfts because every month they extract millions of dollars in royalties and that's liquidity that is just never coming back Back. Yet despite most people agreeing that this is overall a bad trend, the free mint meta has continued to dominate for months now and you now have a group of adults who have grown accustomed to just logging into Discord every day to trade these derivatives and try to make like $6 in profit. And I'm not gonna lie, for a while there things started to get pretty dark and I started to wonder if we just all had to get used to this as being the new normal. But it turns out that's not the case and all it took was a little platform called Pseudoswap to completely wreck the entire category and I think in the coming weeks and months, we're going to see these DJ mints go from consistently making tens of thousands of dollars in profits for their creators to potentially making close to nothing. Now, to understand why this meta is about to get destroyed, we first have to look at the business behind a free mint and why we have so many in the first place. You see, back in the day, back in 2021, if you wanted to drop a run of the mill NFT scam, there was a formula for how you would do it. First, you would create the collection and the art could be something that you made yourself or you hired somebody from Fiverr to do it for you. Second, you make the website. And this is where you talk about how this NFT is gonna change the world or whatever you wanna say. And then third, you open up a Discord, put some mods in there, maybe a community manager, and then you just start ramping up the momentum. Now, let's say you're selling 10,000 NFTs. Well, ideally you sell them all, but you don't have to. Even if you sold only 5%, which is 500 NFTs at a price of say 0.05 ETH, you would still make 25 ETH, which at today's prices is around $50,000. This means you would very likely be in profit just by selling 5% of your collection, which for a while wasn't that hard to do. However, people began to catch on and it became harder to convince buyers to spend even 0.05 ETH on a collection that you know, had a flimsy roadmap, a non-founder, cheap looking art, etc. Well then, just as this charade was running out of fuel, we saw free mints rise as a viable model. And if you were one of those scammers, this probably got your spidey senses tingling. Because first off, on the cost side, free mints are even cheaper to produce. Because in many cases, you don't need a website, you don't even need a Discord, so you don't need to hire anybody outside of the actual creation of the NFTs themselves, which tends to be pretty inexpensive. Second, free mints are great because you finally find found a way to get your NFTs into people's hands because there's no shortage of DGENs that are willing to take a mostly risk-free bet on a new collection. And even though people weren't paying you upfront for your NFTs, you still had a second source of revenue, which of course are the royalties. And since your NFT was free, traders were more forgiving if you decided to go with a higher royalty rate. And that's why we started to see these rates increase from two to 3% to as high as even 10%. Now with a 10% rate, it means that a DGEN min only needs to hit 100 ETH in volume to make around $20,000, which given the lower cost of a free mint, almost definitely puts them in profit. This is why there seems to be an endless number of free mints because they're cheap to produce and it's not hard to turn a profit after just a few days without any expectations of long-term support. But it's important to understand that most of these are not passion projects, right? There's nobody out there dreaming of one day releasing mecha goblins. Instead, they're being driven by pure economics and they're probably being made in factories out there in developing countries. And the glue that is keeping all of this together are the royalties because without that, 
the math just doesn't work. And so here we've arrived at the catalyst behind what's about to happen. You see, if you were to go on NFT Twitter nowadays, you would see a lot of people talking about royalties. And that's because of a platform called PseudoSwap, which is letting people easily buy and sell NFTs while bypassing creator royalties altogether. If you haven't seen my video on PseudoSwap last week, I highly recommend checking it out because in there I talk about how this platform might scale faster than people think. And there's a high chance that the market is just simply gonna prefer spending less ETH on NFTs instead of honoring creator royalties. Until now, we haven't figured out an elegant way of hard coding royalty enforcement into a smart contract, partly because you can just wrap the token and bypass it, and also because you can't differentiate between what is a sale versus what's a normal transfer. So the assumption is that barring some technical breakthrough that solves this puzzle, we're likely to see a future where creators can no longer rely on royalties as a meaningful part of the business. Now this affects some creators more than others. For example, one of one artists, it probably doesn't affect them as much because people aren't gonna really trade one of one art through PseudoSwap, but larger profile pick collections, they're gonna feel it more and they're probably gonna have to start thinking about a sustainable model for the first time. But the part of the market that really feels this the most and is probably just going to get wiped out instantly if royalties do go away are the free degen mints. As we said, royalties were the only thing that were keeping these things profitable. And these are not projects that have any long-term plans to build something actually valuable. And so there aren't any other strategies for making revenue. Again, I know there are many good and quality free projects out there. I'm just overgeneralizing to make things simple. And I'll give you a very clear example of how bad this can get for some projects. Projects. And I'm going to use bear tings as an example, not because I think this is a scam or they're not planning on building anything real. I actually don't know anything about what they're building. I'm just using them as an example because they were a popular free mint last week. So bear tings had a royalty rate of 6.9% and has generated 162 ETH in volume. So despite the fact that almost nobody has heard about this project, they've made 11 ETH or $21,000 from royalties alone. That's not bad given that this project came out of nowhere and just a few days later is worth almost nothing and probably is never bouncing back. Now, if we swing over to PseudoSwap, what we're going to see is that only one ETH of volume has been traded on here for bear tanks, and it hasn't had any volume despite the best offer being higher than the floor on OpenSea. The reason why PseudoSwap hasn't taken over for a project like bear tanks is simply lack of awareness. And when PseudoSwap does get integrated into aggregator platforms like Jam or Genie, I can see adoption skyrocketing for these types of projects because the type of people who are trading projects like bear tanks are exactly the type of people who care most about profits and are probably just going to go with the best offer that's in front of them. So if bear tanks had launched three months from now, chances are they wouldn't have made $21,000 and more likely they wouldn't have made anything because people will start catching on to what's happening. In other words, what we're seeing right now is the last of a generation, you know, a real life dinosaur before the comet comes crashing down. Okay. Now let's talk about why this model might actually be replaced by something worse. Earlier, I said that the free mint meta was going away, but it's possible that it might exist in another form. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that CryptoPunks was a free mint and one that had a 0% royalty. And what they did instead was the team kept 10% of the supply, which obviously became very valuable over time. I do think this is viable for a lot of creators and it's a great way to grow a brand where the creator and the collectors are completely aligned. I also also think that in the wrong hands, this model can turn very sketchy. You see, if you were one of those scammers that started off with paid mints and then switched on over to free mints plus royalties, then chances are that you're going to evolve yet another time now using free mints with this CryptoPunks model. But because there's no real intention of supporting the project over the long term, what we're going to see are the creators loading up a bunch of wallets with NFTs. And then as soon as there's just a tiny bit of life and momentum in the collection, they're going to dump those all into the market. This means that they'll introduce sell pressure at exactly the worst time when they're trying to pick up momentum. And given the fact that these drops usually have a short lifespan, say a week or two, that gives them just a short window to dump a ton of NFTs, which, you know, let's say they're dumping 500 of them, that's going to raise alarm bells. So my warning is that when royalties start to go away, even if these free degen mints continue to exist in some form, I would say clear away from them because the business model now involves just dumping on buyers as soon as possible. Like that's the only way they're going to make money. And when it becomes obvious that the team is doing this, the alarm bells will go off and then it becomes just a race to zero. All right, guys, that's it for today. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you at the next video.